Italy versus Serbia was a wild basketball game. Should Serbia have fouled in the end? Should have Bogdanovic been on the floor to take the last shot? Nevertheless, Italy shocked their opponents once again, but it took everything in their willpower to do so. Serbians looked like they had the game in their hands, but Simone Fontecchio and Gigi Tome had other plans. The Azzurri dug themselves out from a 16-point deficit, and in this video we are going to analyze how exactly this happened. The confidence of this young man, it is terrifying. It's 34 seconds left and Serbia are down by 4. A score is needed to keep breathing and preferably a quick one. Pesic draws up a play for Bogdanovic who struggled mightily all night, finishing with a disastrous 1 of 13 from behind the arc. Obviously Italy switch, Bobby beats Meli with speed and gets fouled at the rim. Despite the struggles he will make both free throws to cut the lead to 2 points. As he is shooting there are 28 seconds remaining so Italy in theory could hold the ball for 24 and leave Serbia with only 3 or 4 seconds to win the game. And that's also only given if they secured a defensive rebound. Plus, in my opinion, 3 or 4 seconds are definitely not enough time in FIBA to get a good shot off. So pretty much everyone is sure Serbians are going to foul. Well, at least I was. Were you thinking the same? After he makes both, Pesic subs Bogdanovic out for Avramovic, for defensive purposes, and it makes it obvious that he will get the leader back in immediately after the foul. Now usually with this much time left, first you're looking to trap the opponent, try stealing the ball and only then, if you don't succeed, foul him. Guderich looks to do exactly that after Spisu crosses half court so he can't pass back but never fully commits. It's an easy pass to Fontecchio and this is where I'm absolutely sure the foul is coming. But they choose not to. Marco even looks at the coach but there is no signal there. Simone could hold the ball until it's 4 seconds left and that's why I think fouling is a better choice since Serbia's best player is also sitting on the bench. However, Serbia get a lucky pass. Fontecchio loses the dribble prematurely, Marco's pressure forces him to drive inside and the Italian shoots it with 6 seconds to go on the shot clock. Fortunately for Serbia, the forward misses and Nikola Jovic gets the defensive rebound. But remember, there is a slight problem here. Since they didn't foul, Bogdanovic did not have a chance to get back into the game and this is not the NBA. You can't call a timeout out on the floor. So instead of Bogey, it's Stefan Jovic who averages 4.8 points and shoots 20% from 3 point range with the ball to decide the game for Serbia. And look what happens, he passes it up to the 20 year old Nikola who bumps into the defender and they have to shoot almost a half court heave that doesn't even graze the rim. And that is way off the mark and the Italians, they survive with the victory and that substitution that coach Pesic made taking Bogdanovic out of the game may come back to hold the Serbians. The ending of this possession is why I don't buy critics saying bogey he wouldn't have helped. Yes, he was pretty terrible scoring in this game, but I would take dying with him any day of the week than relying on Stefan Jovic to create a shot in the last seconds. I'm pretty sure he would have created a better look. But the biggest head scratcher here is that Pesic instructed the combination of both subbing Bogdanovic in the end and not fouling. That left Serbia with the lowest amount of possibility to win. Now that's only my opinion, but please write in the comments down below how would you have handled this end of game situation. The game started with Italians hot right from the jump ball, firing threes left and right, playing their best basketball in this tournament. They finished with 7 frees in the first half, yet Bogdanovic's only 3-pointer of the night gave Serbia a 2-point lead heading into the break. Bogdanovic, turn around, quick shot, takes it, Bogdanovic, Troika, Troika, Troika! Shots like this one are the equivalent to goals right before the halftime in football. Usually the team which scores comes back with the momentum after the break. That's exactly what happened. Serbia returned with their defensive intensity at a higher level. Stefan Jovic stole the ball from the Italian point guard, then Bogdanovic did the same to Stefano Tonut. Dobrich dunks on the other end and the game is slowly going away from the Italians. Then the same Dobrich proceeds to deny from Tecchio from the ball and it leaves the Italians off and stalling. Nicola Melli has to invent something from the 3 point line and misses a tough running shot with the left hand. 
On the offensive side, it's Bogdanovic and Molotinov pick and roll working once again as the big man catches the ball under the rim. I thought Serbia's decision of switching was a brilliant one. He learned from their own bad experience in the Eurobasket last year and did not use the drop defense with Milutinov for 40 minutes. Because that simply doesn't work against the Italian modern 5-out offense, where position 4 Achille Polonara or even position 3 players like Giampaolo Ricci play the center spot and pops back after the screen. Instead, they switched all and forced the Italian guards not named Simone Fontecchio to create in ISO situations, and that's not their biggest strength. Another bogey Milutinov pick and roll gets Jovic an open free, and Serbians are up 16 points with 14 minutes to go. Trying to be aggressive off the screens. Jovic hasn't made a three, but this time he gets the troika. Fans are thinking the Italian curse is long and gone. But a triple substitution with three minutes remaining immediately balances out the offense. Without the pain presence of Milutinov, Bogdanovic had to force the issue way too much in ISO situations while the threes weren't falling. After the sub, Serbians went on to score two points in the next six minutes. Looking from the other perspective, down 16 and the Italian hopes of reaching the World Cup's quarterfinal are flying away. With the whole nation on his shoulders, Simone Fontecchio, tutto staccato, rose to the occasion in the most emphatic fashion. First, he pulls up in Petrushev's face as he is a bit late to contest it. Then, it's a Spain pick and roll and he beats Bogdanovic's closeout to his strong right hand and makes a floater. Maybe Italy still have hopes? After another long miss from Serbia, he gets an early pick from Ricci that gives him a cross match with Petrushev again. Feeling it, he goes to work quickly as the Italian banks seem to be strangely working after 4 p.m. on Friday. Montecchio pumping, tough shot. This guy has become a certified walking bucket. Then Serbia make two free throws and they somehow manage to forget Gigi Datome. That's unacceptable from the players on the court to lose focus like this. The Italian veteran isn't a fan of finishing his basketball career in such a sad way and continues his show. He goes for a two for one play in the transition, pulling up after the dribble and the Italians have cut 10 points in less than 3 minutes. It wasn't over for a wild third quarter. He gets one more chance in transition, misses but gets another one and you know the shooter ain't missing twice in a row. GG, corner, takes it, oh baby! Gigi the last five minutes belonged to no one other than Simone Fontecchio himself. Italians didn't even really play sets anymore, it was pass to Simone and let him go to work kind of approach. That's an unguardable step back over Dobrich, but he's also way too small to be influencing the shot much. Literally the next play down, he catches on the right again. Simo wants a pick this time, but he rejects it to the baseline, pulls back and enters the zone few players in the world can reach. The guy is simply not missing and I'm thinking to myself, Serbia have to try to make others beat you. Something must be done to disrupt Fontecchio. A new defense, a double team if it's an iso play. Yet he catches it again on the right block, faces up Dobrich and knocks down another step back. Why are Serbia thinking the hottest man on the planet is about to miss the next shot? All of a sudden, it's 50 seconds left and Italy are up by two. Everybody in the arena knows where the ball is going. Surely we will see a double team this time, right? The guy has made 10 shots out of 13 at the moment. But we don't see anything like that. Fontecchio is again allowed to catch the ball in his favorite spot. No one is going to double, no one is even stunting hard. At least he drives left, but when you are this hot, the rim looks like the ocean and Simone makes it. We already know what happened after. Overall, it was a beautiful game of runs between Italy and Serbia. It seems that a new rivalry is born as Italy have become a kryptonite to Serbia's powers. That's three times in a row now. What do you think is the main reason behind it? Let's discuss it in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like the video and I'll see you in the next one.